entertained our questions. It was a one-on-one -on -one session over a couple of brews with Mark Passio. That's right. I, I wouldn't have passed. <laughs> I wouldn't have passed that up for a uh, uh, dinner with the uh, the uh, top of the the food chain, Mark, uh, at the at their New York finery. But but uh, but thank you for taking my call. It was such a wonderful time. Um, uh, Freeman Fly was there. Yeah. He came up from South Carolina. That's right. Jamie. Freeman and Jamie, they were both there. It, it, I mean, it was it was just awesome afterward because again you could relax with the formalities of a formal presentation and just relate to people as an individual and, and as friends you know as people who are all trying to do get the same thing accomplished so that was probably my favorite part of the whole evening and uh the whole weekend and l l like i was saying before we I, I feel that there were teachers who were there there were people who are teaching this information, not just coming and hearing about it and learning about it themselves. They're at the point where they're getting ready to transition to start teaching this information. And that's what gave me a lot of hope uh, at the Asheville seminar. I think it was uh, really great and rejuvenating, uh, you know, for me to see that amongst the people who attended. And uh, as I told people last week, I did recover the audio. The audio sounds good. Um, uh, it, it wasn't audio recorded at, at the computer on the stage, but it was recorded through a, a, a microphone through the air, but it was good quality, a good quality recorder, obviously. And um, uh, I am working on the video as we speak, uh, so that should be forthcoming within hopefully a couple of weeks at the most. Uh, my video editing skills are not the uh, the sharpest or the fastest, but uh, I, 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 you know... Uh, Trudge my way through it, and I'll, I'll get a decent video out there uh, within a reasonable amount of time. So look for that at, at least within the next month. Y yes, our our good new friend Steve from Florida saved the day. Yes, he did. And uh, rec uh, what a great person! He, He's going to he, be uh, a teacher of this information. He already really is. I mean, what a great guy! You know, uh, you could just tell by talking to him how genuine he was, and that's the same dynamic I got from everybody there. They're 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 not only hungry for this information; they're hungry to start presenting it to other people. That's what we need more of. Absolutely. Yes, more more voices out there, uh, just doing whatever they can. Uh, posting a blog uh, on one of the Blogspot or WordPress dot com. Uh, going on to the radio shows, uh, like uh, my Blog Talk, of course, is my venue. Uh, but there's Talk Shoe. Everybody, guys, get out there, uh, get your voices out there, uh, and speak natural law as you know it. Uh, it is worthwhile. Uh, Mark, uh, any determination on these psychopaths? What uh, What's driving uh, the, the psycho psychopath? Well, like I was saying, they, they want everybody to be as miserable as they are. Uh, you know, there's a great Carlos Castaneda quote, regardless of what anyone thinks of, of Castaneda, you know, because he put out allegories as kind of like, you know, real life stories. Uh, but uh, I personally really like his work, and I think it's the the uh, underlying philosophical messages in the work that are important, not what the actual condition was. This is where people always get hung up. You know, what, what, you know, was he really there with this guy? Was he a real guy? Is he making it up, folks? He's putting the uh, philosophical understanding into an allegorical work of fiction, and there's nothing wrong with doing that. Okay. Uh, you could get all on his case because he may have passed it off as an actual series of events, but you know, whatever. It, does the work stand on its own for the value it's trying to teach people? And I feel that it does. And he talks about the predator mindset that the Don Juan character talks about. Maybe I'll try to find that during one of the breaks and read it to people because it's all about the, the condition of psychopathy and how these controllers try to propagate it. Uh, I have two brief questions. Sure. Uh, the first question is, uh, so these uh, these people with this occulted knowledge, mm -hmm. they understand natural law and they understand how it works. Right. And if that's if that's the case, why would they try to do such great evil to humanity, knowing that um, they're going to get a spiritual kick in the butt? Okay, I, I've, I have answered this question before on previous What on Earth is Happening podcast, but it is very important. Okay, the answer is. They are not the ones doing the evil, ultimately. The ones who are really controlling the dynamic are issuing the orders to other individuals to carry them out by following their orders. The order followers are the ones who are doing this with their behavior, with their actions to the people of humanity. They are the ones who actually accomplish the task. 
So that is the answer. How do they think that they are going to escape from the brunt of the karmic consequences of natural law? Because they're not the ones actually performing the actions. Order followers are, namely the police and the military. The people who are going to take upon th their life force, upon their soul, the deepest karmic consequence when it comes to natural law consequences are the people who actually do the violent actions that they have no right to perform against other individuals. And those individuals throughout history have been the dupes, the pawns, the dogs of these individuals who do understand how this works. And that is how they are insulating themselves from those consequences because they're not the ones doing them. All they're doing is moving their lips. They're writing things down on paper, writing things down on paper, typing at a keyboard, moving their lips. What are they actually physically doing? Has anybody been uh, hardcore assaulted by uh, David Rockefeller or, uh, you know, uh, Jacob de Rothschild recently? They, they, they wielded any uh, M4 rifles at anybody's head late of late? I, I, don't, I don't see that happening. And I'm not making excuse for their level of evil. Please don't see it as such. I'm just answering, if they understand how natural law operates, how are they insulating themselves against the negative effects of it? By, by continuing to propagate evil. It's because they're not actually taking the actions. Other people take the actions, and then the, the consequences get brought down upon those individuals for the most part. It's not to say that there aren't going to be any consequences for the kind of false ideas that they've propagated. There are consequences for them. They've chosen those less severe consequences because I, I've told people this before. Ladies and gentlemen, listen very carefully to what I'm about to say. Okay, If I had to choose, if someone, let's say the creator of the universe somehow manifested itself and said, you must choose and you have no choice in the matter, you must choose between these two eventualities, you will go into the body or into the place of one of the psychopathic world controllers who has actually uh, tried to, to, to wield influence in this world and convince other people to do their bidding. Okay, or you must go into the body or into the place of one of the people who followed their orders and actually committed those wrongdoings without asking the question, is this something that I should be doing because it's morally right and I have a right to do it? In a heartbeat, I'd take the situation where I would go into the body or in the place of the world controller. In a heartbeat, without even thinking about it for a, for a second. Because the karmic, the brunt of the karmic consequence is always going to be the strongest, the deepest, the darkest for the individual who carries out the action. And no one wants to hear that spoken. No one, you want to talk about the, one of the most painful things there ever is to hear. It's what I just laid out right there, folks. Though, well, that's why they call it a police state. They don't call it a banker state, folks. They don't call it a politician state, nor is it called a lawyer state or a judge state, okay, or a corporation state. It's called a police state, a totalitarian closed society for a reason. It's called that because those are the people who ultimately make it happen, who ultimately create that actuality playing out in life experience. Without those people taking those actions, that actuality cannot form, cannot manifest in reality. Get it through your heads, ladies and gentlemen. That's how the laws of karmic consequence work. And that's these controllers know it. And they've done a masterful job of getting other people to do their dirty work for them. And they continue to do it. They continue to just absolutely lick the rear end of these lunatic psychopaths. We were talking to Alex in New Hampshire before the break. He asked the question about, um, you know, if the controllers of this world understand natural law and know that it's in effect, why do they try to break it and disobey it? And my answer was, they really don't. They get people to do that dirty work for them. And 
just as a, a one uh, addendum to what I said before the break, I just want to tell, make the statement on the air in no uncertain terms, very equivocally. The most evil people in this world are not the people who issue the commands. The most evil people in this world are those who follow them. Order followers are the depths of evil. Ladies and gentlemen, get as offended as you like, scream and, and bang on the walls, cry in your milk. I don't care what you think of that statement. It's the truth. I'm not here to blow smoke up your rear end. I'm not here to make you feel good about the truth. The truth is ugly. I'm not here to win a popularity contest or have you like me. It's not why I do this. Believe me, if I just wanted to be liked, I'd be telling people what they wanted to hear all day long. The most evil people in this world are people who follow other people's orders. I don't care if those orders are high-minded with the best of intentions and even possibly in alignment with morality. It wouldn't even matter if, they were, if, those, if the orders were in alignment with morality to just blindly follow is still an evil act because you are giving up the gift of the Creator, free will. Free will to choose for yourself right action over wrong action once you clearly understand the difference. There is no conscience in following any order. Any order, no matter how well-intentioned. Conscience does not exist within that being because conscience is the knowledge of the definitive difference between objective moral behavior and objective immoral behavior. The objective difference between those two modalities of behavior. And as long as somebody is following orders, they're not exercising their conscience. By definition, it's a hodgepodge. Again, it's a hierarchy. A hierarchy that's built upon um, order following, built upon uh, doing things that you are asked without question because you will receive favors in return. Uh, protecting your your brothers in the network, you know your, your compatriots within the network, and uh, it, it's it, it's a it's a spider's web of interconnectivity. That's what we have to understand. That it's no one particular group. It is a group of psychopathic entities that have all come together. That they've all said we can't accomplish this dark work on our own. We have to come together and say we're going to work together toward this end goal, toward this end game. You know, and that's what they do. They're, they're very effective at putting their minds together. They call it in the dark occult a mastermind. Literally, this is their name for this uh, construct. Okay? What, what, see, when we consider the term mastermind, people think one person and they're the big planner and everybody else follows them. That's not what a mastermind is in the dark occult world. A mastermind is a group of individuals that are focused intently on the same work. They come together, they form one large mind, okay, all focused on that end goal, that end game. And they will let nothing deter them from their path. They're unified in how they think, in the methodologies they're going to use to accomplish that goal. They're, they're unified in their dark form of care. It isn't empathic care, but it's, it's focused intent. It's saying, I care about getting this done so much, this is what I want more than anything else. More than anything else in life. And that's a form of care. I call it dark care, because it's not really empathic care. It's not emotion-based care. It's just, I care so much about getting this done, I'm going to make it my, my ultimate goal. And I'm going to focus all my energy on it, no matter what it takes. So they have that as well. So they have the intellect, they have care, in the form of dark care. And they have the will to act. And they're unified on those fronts. So the universe is going to respect entities like that, even if they're dark and evil. Because if they're unified, and their thoughts, emotions, and actions are working on the same page toward the same goal, on, on a focused effort, then the universe is going to grant them what they want. Even if it's something that's bad for other people. And people can't comprehend that. They, they, they get angry at me for saying that. How could you say the universe is going to give them what they want? Easy. Because they're unified and we're not. 
The universe respects unity consciousness, even if that unity consciousness happens to be dark unity consciousness. It's going to respect unity over divisiveness. And that's why they're on the same page. They're working as a tight-knit unit for the same goals. We're all over the place. The side of freedom and good and order is all over the place, scattered to the four winds of the, of the earth, can't get together over the basics, which is natural law.